Welcome back here with ET Insight. Now, the only reason why there's been no merger over the last three years is because of the uncertain regulatory climate. The big question now, will the government change the rules of the m and game? The only man who can answer that question is Telecom Minister Kapil Sibbal. Here's an exclusive interview. There is a recommendation of the TRAI. The matter is being discussed in the ministry. The matter will go to the Telecom Commission. And then we'll take a final view on the matter. So these are all matters under discussion. So whether it should be five or it should be six, these are all matters which will be decided. A lot of people within the industry believe that the TRI recommendations will never pave way for the big ticket MA to happen. Uh, isn't that something What's that the big bothers? ticket MA? By you know, by big ticket I mean two big operators merging or a big operator. Well, you know, that all merger. depends on the nature of the industry because every every country, um, uh, the telecom sector operates differently. Hmm. And uh, uh, and every country um, is differently placed. You have a lot of people in the country who cannot possibly afford uh, the kind of charges uh, that telecom operators charge, say, in Europe hmm. or the United States of America. And uh, in that context, uh, TRA has made a recommendation. We are looking at it. We believe that we believe for the moment that six operators um, are ideal. I have one question to ask you because you did say that the thinking right now is that six perhaps is a good number to go with. Hypothetically speaking, TRAI has given a recommendation. At some stage as DOT, you realize that you're not willing to go by that number, you're not willing to go by that recommendation. Will you overwrite TRAI? No, there is a procedure to be followed, as you know. The legal mm -hmm. procedure is if we disagree with the recommendations of TRAI, we send our opinion back to the TRAI. Right. The TRAI then cogitates upon it, thinks about it, and comes back to us, and then we take a decision. But as someone who's known to have a mind of his own in most decision making, and one has seen that happen in the past few months now, uh, if at all you do not agree with TRAI in entirety, will you uh, have the, I don't know, courage is perhaps the wrong word, but will you have the will to send it back and say this is not something well, that Absolutely, we are doing it, already doing it in some issues, on some issues. Not an issue. I think TRAI is a statutory body. It is the expert body. And uh, its expert opinion is of great value. And if we disagree with it, which we are entitled to, mm. then we must refer it back to the expert body. Uh, but but uh, we are entitled to disagree, of course. But, uh, but just, just away from that, uh, a merger of two big players will create a monopoly. And like you said, monopolies are not good for consumers at the end of the day. But the problem with uh, a situation like that is that if the merger doesn't happen between two big players, then the merger necessarily has to happen between a big and a small there player. Are, there are, you see, in this context, there are several issues. Mm. There is an issue of market share. That's right, yeah. What should be the maximum market share? Mm. Um, then there is an issue of the number of, uh, of, 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 uh, of customers, right? There is that issue. Right. There is the issue of spectrum, True. right? And if you have, if you merge... Uh, I know, there's you an know, what is the maximum issue. amount of spectrum you can have? Mm. So these are very complex issues, and uh, on all these matters, the TRAI has made recommendations. And we are looking at it, and we'll take a decision. But prima facie, as I told you, right. we believe that six is a good number. When you say that the, one of the very reasons why m is happening is because of the unviable business models. Of I didn't say that. You said that. Okay, I'm saying that. One of the reasons why m is happening perhaps is, and you're perhaps facilitating m and is because there are new entrants who are finding it very difficult to survive. Why not have an exit policy? Well, yes, I think there's no, we are open to that as well. When you say you're open, how, how no, open we, are we you? Will, we will think about it and say, is it necessary to have an exit policy or will the market forces work themselves out in a manner that we will have about six players in the market? Because a lot of these players that you speak to, and a lot of them on the record have actually said that they are willing to surrender their spectrum. No, no, that's the point. You see, yeah. those who think that the, that the business is unviable in the present circumstances mm. want to surrender, but who don't want to uh, want to uh, discharge their obligations under the license. That's also so, true. So, therefore, you can't have an exit policy through which somebody says, well, my business didn't turn out to be viable, so I don't have to discharge my obligations under the license. You please allow me to surrender. These are very serious matters. And supposing we do, you may have the court coming uh, and hitting us very strongly and saying, how did you, you are responsible for a lot of public revenue loss. But won't you be actually gaining revenue? Some no, no, I don't know. Business. That is for your business thinks right. like that. Right. But right. courts don't necessarily think like that. And you think there'll be a whole lot of litigation if you just exactly. allow people to exactly. exit exactly. so easily? A lot of litigation, a lot of, uh, you know, a uh, uh, lot of um, uh, situations will develop where people will try and take advantage, That's uh, true. attack the ministry, hmm. uh, and, and try and find motives where none exist. 
which is the order of the day nowadays. So I want to be very careful on that. Uh, the fact of the matter also is that the TRI recommended about 85 licenses to be terminated for uh, not meeting rollout obligations. You've sent notices to about 22. Are you consciously going slow or do you think no, the no, TRI was No, no, no question of constantly board? going slow. Remember mm. when there's a recommendation by the TRI, it's an expert body. So we have to look at all 85 cases. We have to examine them and we have to either agree or not agree. And that takes a bit of time and we have to look at the parameters. We have to look at the assumptions that the TRA has made That's right. uh, on the basis of which the recommendation um, is to cancel uh, 85 licenses. We have to see whether those assumptions are right. We have also to see whether, uh, you know, what's the case of the other side. So we have to give a show cause notice. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, the licensee is entitled to tell us why they were able, not able to right. uh, roll, out, roll out and they may have some valid reasons, mm. right, which may not have been taken into consideration. So the process itself is complicated and uh, involves a quasi-judicial uh, determination mm. uh, by looking at all the facts. It's not entirely quasi-judicial, right. but it requires um, a thoughtful consideration mm. uh, of the concerns also of the operators. And, and then we come to a conclusion. Uh, and, uh, and send the recommendation back if we don't agree with it. Uh, a quick few last questions. Spectrum pricing, when you took on and the first time we spoke, you said you were not certain if auction is going to be the right way going ahead or a minimum base price. Where are we on that? Well, as I said before, mm. that the principal decision is that we are going to delink the license from the spectrum. I think that's the most important decision. Mm. When you come to pricing, that's again something that we will have to consult. Uh, TRAI has an opinion on it. We have an opinion on it. There's an expert body that was set up. Uh, Telecom Commission will be looked. What's will be your able, personal view on no, that? No, no, there's nothing personal in these matters. It's, these are government decisions. Have you been a little taken aback or have you been a little surprised with how much uh, influence corporates have had in telecom policy and in decision making so far? But you know, corporates actually run the business. And so they know the nitty gritty of the business. So why should they not have, and, uh, have had influence? I mean, you are talking about the kind of influence they should not have had. Yes. Right? Yes. But I'm talking about the kind of influence they should have because they are the ones who run the business. And this is the reason why I have the dialogue because hmm. I want to know from them hmm. what are the pitfalls, right? What are the um, issues that need to be addressed, which the government is not addressing. Right. At their end uh, of, of the business, what are the problems they face, True. you know, how government should move forward because they have a lot of ideas because they are the ones who know the sector much better than us. But do you think sometimes corporates know the sector a tad too better than the minister? Well, that's, not in your case. That's, that's the caution that we have to exercise at our end. Oh. So the kind of influence they might have had earlier, I doubt if they'll ever have again. One last question, and this is on Idea Spice merger. There's been a verbal spat of sorts. There's been letter writing that has happened from the DOT to Idea. Uh, Idea has willingly said they wanted to surrender the spectrum. Where are we on that? All these, let the, all these issues be decided in a court of law. Okay, that's all we have in this edition of ET Insight. Thanks so much for watching the show. Do send us your feedback and suggestions, and news and updates continue right here on ET Now.